Roberta Haynes. Roberta Haynes, born Roberta Altlineshack, August 19. 1927, April 4. 2019 was an American actress who was active from 1947 until 1989. Early life. She was born Roberta Alline Shack in Wichita Falls, Texas on August 19, 1927 to William Shack and Jewel Eichel Shack. She had one older brother. Her parents were both originally from New York City. Her mother had been a dancer with the Schubert Road Company and an Eddie Cantor review. Her father was an electrical engineer. In 1930, he took a job with the Canada Electric Company in Toronto. Canadian border control records from that time identified the family as being our Fibu race. By 1935, the family had moved to Los Angeles, California. She attended John Burroughs Junior High School through 1942, where the yearbook listed her desired occupation as actress. She took dancing lessons from an early age, studied with drama coach Grace Bowman, and performed in variety shows for charity. She then went to North Hollywood High School, where as a senior she played a 19th century California senorita in a student stage production. This event marked two firsts that would be repeated many times in her long career, getting her photo in the newspaper and being cast as an ethnic type. Early stage career. After graduating from high school in June 1945, Bobby Shack married John East. Brunt, who had just received a master's degree at UCLA. The couple moved to New York City, where Frund entered the PhD program at Columbia University while she studied drama with Herbert Berghoff. Shaq also took a course in modern dance for Martha Graham, but her marriage ended by January 1946, so Shaq returned to Los Angeles and enrolled in classes at UCLA, majoring in drama and French. Her first known professional credit as Roberta Haynes came in February 1947 with her casting in a production of Charlie's Aunt. This old farce hadn't played in Los Angeles for 25 years. It was presented by the Stage Inc. troupe and mounted at the Musart Theatre. Critics seemed to like Haynes, despite what was felt to be weak staging, and her photo appeared in several Los Angeles newspapers. For Haynes, it also meant getting her actor's equity card. Her next known performance was an original play, by John Bright called City of Angels, which premiered at the Musart Theatre in June 1948. Directed by Anthony Crin, Haynes had a minor role as a patriot in East Los Angeles who gets swept up in riots following a policeman's murder. The play itself nearly caused a riot. Fourteen cast members walked at on opening night due to shoddy production values. When the play finally did open a week later, it was shut down after two nights by the Los Angeles police, ostensibly because it lacked a permit. They refused to issue a permit until the playwright and producer agreed to drop certain objectionable lines from the script. The play then reopened for another two weeks of performances. The notoriety of City of Angels coupled with newspapers running photos of Haynes in it may have led to her receiving uncredited parts in two movies, Knock on Any Door and We Were Strangers, filmed in 1948 for release the next year. Haynes' next known stage credit was for Elaine Ryan's adaption of B. Melman's 1943 novel Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. The production was produced and directed by Hume Cronin and combined professional actors with drama students at Stanford University. Performed at Stanford's Memorial Theatre during July 1949, the production starred Jessica Tandy and Akim Tamaroff, with Jean Bates, Fedor Chaliapin, Milton Parsons and Haynes as the supporting professionals. The Madwoman of Chialot Haynes went to New York City in September 1949 to make an episode of a combined radio and TV show starring Boris Koloff. She may also have had some expectation of resuming her role in Nara I Lay Me Down to Sleep, which Cronin had sold to new producers for Broadway. This was her first experience of television, 
which would become her predominant performing medium in later years. While in New York, she was offered a part in the touring company for the Maidrament of Chalot, which she joined in late December 1949. The touring company included Martita Hunt in the title role, with Estelle Winwood, John Carradine, Jacques Hobbertson, Jonathan Harris, Martin Koslick, Faye Rupa and a dozen others. Haynes, as Irma the Waitress, replaced Lyra Dana, who had been with the play since it opened on Broadway in 1948. Her character had the only romance in the story, with Pierre the architect Alan Shane. The tour played Philadelphia and Detroit, where reviewers mentioned Haynes favourably, Boston, and Baltimore, where the local paper ran a photo of Haynes as Irm accepting a flower from John Carradine as the rackbicker. By March 1950, it was in Chicago, where the Tribune printed a series of photos illustrating the storyline of the play. The play stayed six weeks at Chicago's Alanga Theatre before moving on to a host of smaller cities. By June 1950, the production was back on Broadway, where it finished up with a three-week run at the City Centre Theatre. Haynes had clearly established herself as a stage actress with this lawn tour. Back to West Coast. In the remaining months of 1950, Haynes did episodes of two New York-based shows, Somerset Maw on TV Theatre and the Isle Lawn Pulitzer Prize Playhouse. She did another episode of the former in January 1951. During the four months of 1950, she also had an understudy role in the house of Bernard Alba for American National Theatre and Academy. By February 1951, Haynes was back on the West Coast, where she and her mother were contestants on a radio quiz show called Managing Editor, broadcast on Kegel. Haynes appeared as the daughter in a bare-bones version of Tartuffe, the imposter during May 1951. Presented at the Eva Theatre in Los Angeles for a two-week run, it starred Sam Jaff in the title role, with Alec J. D. J. Thompson, William Shallert, Richard Vath, Mira McKinney, Kathleen Freeman and Lamont Johnson. Albert Bam produced and directed the production. While most reviewers praised Haynes' performance, one said she was quite competent but not overly inspired. Haynes was signed for the cast of High Noon in early September 1951. A columnist who met her that fall on location in Sonora described her, she's slender, dark-skinned, Latin in looks and not at all a Hollywood cover girl type. Unfortunately, her part in the well-known Western classic was cut during editing. During December 1951 and January 1952, Haynes filmed her brief but important part in The Fighter, where she plays star Richard Conte's June fiancé. March 1952 saw the broadcast of the first of two episodes she made for the series Rebound, with the other hitting the airwaves in May. Return to Paradise after the disappointment of High Noon, Haynes received a second chance to work with Gary Cooper. Producer Theon Worth and director Mark Robson selected her for one of the two female leads in Return to Paradise. Based on James Michener's short story Mr Morgan set on the fictional island of Matava, the film was to be shot on location in the South Pacific. Haynes and director Robson left from Honolulu for the island of Upolu in western Samoa on May 9. 1952. She would spend a month in the small village of Matatu, La Foga before the rest of the Hollywood cast and crew arrived to soak up local customs, speech patterns and ways of moving. The other female lead was played by local Moira MacDonald, whom Robson had discovered in Apia, the capital of Western Samoa. Her selection as Cooper's romantic interest after being edited out of High Noon triggered a wave of Cinderella-themed stories in the press. MacDonald would play the character's daughter, the storyline taking place over a period of 20 years. Haynes would spend four and a half months in Samoa making the film. She wrote occasional letters back home from which her mother fed snippets to the local papers and even spoke with her parents via short-wave radio courtesy of a neighbouring ham. 
She also wrote an article for Jimmy Fiddler's syndicated column about her experiences and the film company's progress in making the movie. Location filming completed in late September 1952 and the Hollywood cast flew back to Los Angeles by the end of the month. As in The Fighter, Haynes' character would die midway through the film, nevertheless she had finally broken out of ingenue roles into leading woman status. The Turn to Paradise was released in late July 1953 to a generally favourable reception by critics. Edmund Schallert said Haynes depicts the native girl Miva like a native, one of the most convincing portrayals in the picture. Howard McClay wrote to Haynes brings a warm, almost childlike quality to a role that could easily have been overdone in less understanding hands. Controversial photo. During October 1952, a full page photo of Haynes appeared in the back cover of a trade magazine that caused a stir in Hollywood. According to Hedda Hopper's syndicated column, the Breen office put in a strong objection to it, and three studios asked to interview Roberta. Laurella O. Parsons denounced the photo ad as bad taste. Why, Frank Freeman issued a statement for the Association of Motion Picture Producers denouncing salacious photos of females and warning they would not lead to success. However, columnist Erskine Johnson and Shayla Graham both wrote in praise of Haynes and her career prospects. Parsons reversed herself quickly when it became known that Columbia had signed Haynes to a contract, stating the photo ad wasn't Haynes' fault. Haynes told her side of the story to journalist Aline Mosby in a later interview carried by UPA. The interviewer produced the photo, letting readers judge for themselves. Columbia contract. Shortly after returning to the States, Haynes' option with Aspen Productions was picked up for a picture per year over four years' time. It was not an exclusive contract, so Haynes was free to take on other work when Aspen didn't need her. When Columbia signed Haynes to a long-term contract in December 1952, the prevailing rumour was that she would be cast in From Here to Eternity. She was given five screen tests for the pot that eventually went to Donna Reed. The rumour reported by Shayla Graham was that producer Jerry Wald wanted Haynes, but director Fred Zinnemann didn't. Harry Cohn cast the tiebreaker, giving the nod to Donna Reed. Haynes was then said to be set for a 3D remake of Golden Boy called Strong Arm, which would co-star Broderick Crawford and John Derrick, but the project was abandoned. Sent out on a tour to the East Coast to promote Return to Paradise for Aspen Productions, Haynes alone to her new bosses at Columbia with her frankness in interviews. Can't pronounce their R's. They always talk about when the U.S. May lines were there. The May lines left about 1,800 children there. It's about 90 miles long and 30 miles wide and supports about 30,000 people, of whom only 300 are European. About half of that small group are of mixed blood. Segregation is unknown. For that, you have to go to American Samoa, about 90 miles away. Haynes learned from the newspapers that she had been assigned a role with Rock Hudson in a 3D western called Gun Fury. The film would also star Donna Reed, an irony not lost on columnists aware of the rivalry for From Here to Eternity. Two weeks of location shooting in Sedona, Arizona wrapped up in early June 1953 and production moved back to the Columbia Ranch in California. While she was still working on Gun Fury, and awaiting release of Return to Paradise, Columbia announced Haynes would be starred in another 3D western, The Nebraskan. She would have topped billing with Phil Kay, who had also been on Gun Fury. The Nebraskan went into production during late June 1953, completing location shooting at Burroughs Flats in early July. After finishing both Gun Fury and The Nebraskan, Haynes was asked to do a third western. She would again be the secondary female lead, playing in Apache Girl in Massacre at Moccasin Pass. Set to star Phil Carey and Audrey Totter, Charlito was cast when Haynes declined, and the film was eventually renamed to Massacre Canyon. Her Columbia contract ran through December, 
but Haynes was too bitter about the cricky westerns and her secondary roles to stay. She forgot settlement and was released from her contract at the end of September 1953. Abroad, Haynes made the second of two appearances on jukebox jury for 1953 at the end of October. For some time, snippets had appeared in newspapers that Haynes was learning Italian in preparation for making films abroad. However, before going to Europe, she committed to a service tour of Korea. Johnny Grant took Haynes, Mary Anders, Terry Moore and others in December 1953 to entertain US military personnel stationed there for Christmas and New Year's. When Haynes returned to Hollywood in January 1954, she gave a candid interview about the trip. In late May 1954, Haynes sailed from New York City to La Hava for a year's stay abroad. Her parents informed the local paper she would be doing some television in Paris and later going to Rome for a new film. She was reported to have signed in Rome for a role in Garden of the Semiramis to start filming in October. She was also reported to have signed in February 1955 for a film to be called Bombay Flight. She is credited on MDB with a 1955 Franco-Italian film called Tu per la Vita, for which she was either a very minor actor or possibly provided English dialogue. She did one episode of the syndicated series Captain Gallant of the Foreign Legion while in Italy. She returned to Paris in June 1955 to make an episode of the television series Sherlock Holmes. While there, Producer-director Sheldon Reynolds also persuaded Haynes to do a cameo in his film Foreign Intrigue. Haynes returned to the US in late July 1955. Television 1956 minus 1916. During December 1955, John Hall cast Haynes in two half-hour pilot episodes for a new series called Night of the South Seas, in which he would star. Hall and Haynes visited Allentown. Pennsylvania in March 1956 for a department store opening and to promote the new series. Haynes pretended to not know English, while Hall introduced her as a Persian starlet and translated for her. A reporter bought it completely and the story appeared that way in the local paper without a byline, fortunately for the reporter. The pilots never sold, so Hall combined them with the additional footage for a film called Hellshit Mutiny released in 1957, which would be Haynes' last film for a decade. For the next five years, Haynes' screen work would be confined to television. She appeared on a local primetime quiz show Mr Genius during January 1956. The next month, she made an episode of Warner Bros. Presents for its Casablanca series. During March, she appeared on an episode of Crusader. She made another episode for Warner Bros. Presence in October 1956, this time for its conflict series. For the 1956-57 holiday season, Haynes once again volunteered for a tour to entertain US servicemen. This time she would head a unit of entertainers visiting European posts. Upon return to the US, Haynes' next performing work was a live colour broadcast of matinee theatre for the importance of being earnest in February 1957. She did another matinee theatre in April, this time for the Old Testament story of Joseph and his brothers. She did an episode of Climax in June and an episode of M Squad in October 1957. Haynes did another matinee theatre in March 1958 and an episode of United States Steel Air in early June. She performed in a Studio One story in September. The year 1959 was the high point in Haynes' television career. She did six different series, including Behind Closed Doors, The Lawless Years, Not For Hire, One Step Beyond, Black Saddle and Richard Diamond, Private Detective. During this year, she also made some pilot episodes for a new and GM series called Profess Marshall, which co-starred Ralph Meeker and Mary Blanchard. July 1959 saw her return to the stage for the first time in eight years. She appeared in Look Back in Anger at the Laguna Beach Playhouse with Don Hiron, Marsha Henderson, Michael Gibson and Nelson Welch. 
Reviewer Velma Dunlap credited Haynes with a very good performance in this production directed by Patrick Mackey. Haynes had episodes of five series broadcast in 1960, all within the first three months. She guest starred in The Man and the Challenge, Lawman, The Rebel, Hawaiian Eye, and Johnny Staccato. The less named had her playing a woman blinded in an accident, foreshadowing her own life. Later career Eye injuries from explosions and gunfire during the making of a Western film kept Haynes out of acting for eight years 1960 minus 1967. Two operations restored her sight after she lost virtually all of her vision and faced the prospect of permanent blindness. It's not known for which film or TV episode this accident occurred. Her first known performing credit in eight years was a cameo in the film Point Blank, released in October 1967. She served as a dialogue coach for the Franco-Italian The Thirteen Chairs in 1969 and did minor bits in four films over the next three years, The Adventurers 1970, The Martlet's Tale 1970, Valdez is Coming 1971 and Pete Antilly 1972. She resumed television acting in 1973 with a part in an episode of the FBI. Thereafter, she would alternate acting with producing roles for television, doing two TV movies in the latter capacity, Summer Girl 1978 and Nowhere to Hide 1983. Her final acting roles on television were all minor bits, including a TV movie The Rules of Marriage and the series Falcon Crest in 1982, and episodes of Knott's Landing and Knight Rider in 1986. Her final performing credit was for the 1989 film Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. Ains and Wend Highland co-authored a compilation of interviews with Hollywood professionals called How to Make It in Hollywood. Published in 1975, it contained interviews with producers, directors, agents and casting directors, as well as performers such as Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. The book was well received by critics and was recommended reading by Joseph Bernard, executive director of the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute. Personal Life Haynes and talent agent Jay Cantor took out a marriage licence in late September 1947. The actual ceremony was held in late November at the backyard of her parents' home in North Hollywood. There is no public record of their divorce available. Their columnist Edith Quinn reported it lasted only six months. Haynes was allergic to nuts. Upon return from Samoa in September 1952, she had dinner at a Chinese restaurant in Waikiki with other members of the film company. One dish contained finely chopped nuts. Haynes suffered an allergic reaction, began convulsing, and had to spend the night in a hospital emergency room. She recovered quickly and was able to fly to Los Angeles the next day. She headed on again, off again romance with Marlon Brando during the early 1950s. Columnist Lee Berg described her in an interview, Roberta is a tense, enigmatic young lady who conceals her drive behind a placid exterior and a gentle voice that is almost a whisper. Sidney Skolsky wrote she always looks sad as if she had just finished singing a torch song. He added that she lived by herself in a modest Hollywood apartment did her own housekeeping and cooking, loved coffee, and dressed more for comfort than style. Haynes had brown hair and dark brown eyes, was 531 slash 2161.3 cm tall and weighed 114 pounds 51.71 kg at age 24. As Roberta Schack, Haynes married actor Larry M. Ward in Las Vegas, Nevada during August 1962. The couple had one son together, Haynes' only child. Their relationship was creative as well as personal, as they collaborated on screenplays A Free Trip to Naples, French Leave and a novel. They divorced in Los Angeles during February 1973. Haynes attended LSD therapy sessions. Roberta Haynes died on April 4, 2019,
in Delray Beach, Florida at the age of 91. She was cremated and the following July her family took her ashes to Samoa where they were interred during a public ceremony at the Return to Paradise Resort. Stage Performances They play a role venue now it's 1946 Chavlis and Amy Spettig Musical Theatre 3 Week 1 drew praise for Haynes, but not the production 1948 City of Angels Musical Theatre drama about ethnic tensions in the East L at suffered through a cast revolt and later provoked a police shutdown 1949 now I lay me dead to sleep Memorial Theatre Hume Cronin was artist in residence at Stafford when he directed this play, The Mad Woman of Charlotte Amateur in Company Twenty. Week to saw Haynes join in late December 1949 through May 1950. 1950 Mad Woman of Charlotte Ernest City Centre production returned to Broadway for 17 performances after it her finished House of Bernard Alba and a study ant theatre 1951 talked of the imposter Mary in Evo Theatre. This was the old Vic version. Cut down to two acts with long speeches omitted 1959. Look back in under Helena Chobbles Laguna Beach Players 2. Week run for this Irish players slash Michael Gibson production. Oh. Thelmography. The title Royal Nose 1949. Knock on any door. Woman uncredited. We were strange as Lily to others uncredited. 1952. High noon. Haynes Pot in this classic film wound up on the tutting room floor. The fight and nervous. The death of Haynes character. Early in the film drives the plot 1953 turned to paradise Miva filmed on location in Samoa. Playing Guy Tupper's love interest was the high point of her film Peru Gun Fury, Stella Morales, the Nebraskan Miss S. Pies, early 1955 to the Polo Vita Franto, Italian production filmed in Italy 1956 for an intrigue, Haynes, Plet Goddard. Don Atoms and May Sinclair at Camelos in this 1957 Hellship Mutiny Princess May for Splice together from two and sold TV pilots and location footage 1967 but in Blant Misses caught a cameo of being smart actor returned to acting after eight years 1969 the 13 chairs dialogue coach Franco Italian production with Olsen Wells and Sharon Tate, 1970, The Adventurers, Daxus Mather, and credited the Mollet's Tale, Italian made film, 1971, Valdez is Coming, Polly, and credited, 1972, Pete and Tilly, Woman, Party, and credited, 1989, Police Academy 6, City and the Siege Bus Pass, in 2004, The Copper Scroll of May, Mike Daly May, The Mother Phones, in Tunisia during 1970s, but only released after death of director Lai Buchanan. Oh. Yes, series episode Royal Notes 1949, starring Boris Kotloff, Matt Illusion, ABC show from New York, it may have been filmed rather than a Larry broadcast 1950 Somerset Mall on TV theatre. On not an episode, her first appearance on the show is known only from a newspaper column pilot surprise play as The Ponzi Story. Her appearance on this show is known only from a newspaper column 1951 Somerset Mall on TV theatre, Honolulu Island Girl with Lydia. Adler 1952 bound the prize Janie Laureate, John Ridgely and wife Haynes hide fugitive the henchman invitation play as slatty money taxi driver is give a fake $20 bill. With Tom Dandrier and Jimmy Cross 1953 jukebox jury 1953 minus 6 minus 27 herself fellow judges were Mickey Rooney, Tom Drake, Colin Gray and Richard Eco 1953 minus 10 minus 31 herself fellow judges were Jan Clayton, Katie Girardo, Norm Van Brocklin, and Herb Jeffries 1955 Sherlock Holmes The Case of the Night Train Riddle Liddy filmed in Paris Captain Gallant of the Foreign Legion Pipeline Kelly Mitchell filmed in Italy Paris Precinct another show filmed in Paris known only from a later interview 1956 Mr Genius 1956 minus 1 minus 25 herself quiz show in which panellists tried to beat Mr Genius in answering questions crusade at the threshold Anisette in Berlin with Brian Keith, Corey Allen and Nan Boardman Castleblanc Siren song Maria Valenti this was part of the Wheel series Warner Bros. Presence Conflict Silent Johnny Maria Haynes plays mother of deaf mute Mexican boy 1957 matinee theatre The importance of being Ernest Gwendolyn Fairfax with Hermione Jingold, Roger Moore and Philip Tond The story of Joseph Portifar's wife stars Brett Halsey with Nan Boardman.
Forrest Taylor, and Paul Lambert Climax. The man who styled the Bible M squad pit loves Mary Mary Kenny Haynes plays girl with a set can make Connor's 1958 matinee theatre The Prophet House Goma Haynes desert house Joseph Weissman for priest Robert Luggy the United States still a family alliance do she for small town boy Bill Hayes and girl Florence Henderson meet in New York studio one no place to run any garden it Haynes plays wife of Black Miller by the Atwater with high chance and Rosemary de Camp 1959 behind closed doors. The crime story as St. Haynes is Eurasian agent for US. Tenapt in Macca the lawless years that is silver Petrina New Year and not for hire. The soldier's story clear it one step beyond for it. Lightning Ellen Chambers bank employee Ralph Nelson defies waste premonition black sat at Apache Trail Charter Haynes plays an Apache woman seeking vengeance Richard Diamond. Private detective the caller, Audrey Billings Diamond David Jansen gets mysterious filling tools while romancing Haynes 1960 the man and the challenge the storm Patricia L. Acula Lum in the show to Matty Creedy the rebel gold seeker disarted once again Haynes is an Apache woman who gets killed away in Nayak Vice Alice Thomas Haynes plays a doubly treacherous receptionist Johnny Stakota the mask of Jason Betsy Brain for Shadley. Haynes plays a woman blinded by accident 1973 the FBI. The Big Job Landlady 1977 Nowhere to Hide TV Movie Associate Producer 1982 The Rules of Marriage TV Movie Elaine Fine Knots Landy Abbey's Choice Anesthesiologist Hash 1983 Summer Girl TV Movie Producer 1986 Falcon Crest Conundrum Dunn and Ettles Night Rider Deadly Night Night Made 1988 The Secret Life of Kathy McCormick TV Movie Woman Hash 2 Oh.